Peace, y'all. How you doing? This is Dr. Samori Swagger signing in. Um, so I'm kind of on the heels of sharing a lot of uh, science and technology. Uh, I have a lot of articles up my sleeve and, you know, just kind of cranking them out now. Um, so I want to share something with you. There is an article that I read in the Journal of Foreign Affairs. Um, I think this was last year. It may have been early last year, probably. Um, last year was 2014. And it was entitled A Brave New World. And, you know, um, Aldous Huxley, he actually wrote um, the book entitled A Brave New World. And he was just talking about basically how um, society had become under... Um, kind of like an authoritarian rule but it was based on a lot of um biology and genetic engineering and the stratification of classes of people based on um their genomic makeup um and so basically it's like you know those who were considered to have uh superior uh genome uh their gene lineage uh were considered like alphas and they were like the best they were you know upper class they were in the ruling class and then you know it goes all the way down betas gammas deltas uh, all of that and the lower down you go like a caste system uh the worst off you are um genetically and socially but so the, this article in the Journal of Foreign Affairs, and it's published by the Council on Foreign Relations. Like I said, I read a lot of different uh, journal articles um, and newspapers and, and books. Um, it caught my eye because I, I, I love the book by Aldous Huxley, A Brave New World. Uh, it's a fascinating book. Um, I actually watched the movie. Another good book is 1984. I watched that movie. These, these movies are very um, intriguing, and it's funny because I, I actually believe that uh, many in government and and geopolitical affairs, they study these novels and books, and they see how they can extract a lot of what they were talking about and put them into actual policy and practice inch by inch. Test society, see what the reaction is. Okay, let me push a little further. Will they accept it? Okay, they accept it. Let me go a little further. Oh, they didn't accept it. Let me tweak a little bit, repackage it, put it back out there again. Okay, they accepted it. And you see that. So with this advent of science and technology, there's a lot of things that are coming down the pipeline that we really need to be aware of. I'm going to be sharing them with, um, with you guys. Um, if you know, you know. Um, if you don't, you don't. Um, but... The whole purpose of what I'm doing is just enlightenment, you know, spreading information um, to those that may not be aware of this. So in this article entitled Brave New World uh, in the Journal of Foreign Affairs, they talked about how they're going to be coming up with these 4D printers. So, you know, we know about 2D printers. We know about 3D printers that allow us to do uh, all types of um Inventions you can print out people like print out plastic guns and things of that nature um, in China they are actually uh, printing out different devices that are used in building houses and things of that nature so you see the utility you see the possibilities of creation uh, with a lot of these 3d printers so they have these 4d printers now that they're working on. And so what the author was discussing, it caught my eye. I was like, wow, this is very interesting. It's very serious. So I just want you to close your eyes and think about this real quick. Just because you have to be able to visualize it to understand what I'm saying. So you know how you have a printer. You know, you may have like a a, a Dell printer or whatever, a Hewlett Packard printer. And, you know, you load the ink cartridge into the printer. You may have a black ink toner cartridge. You may have a multicolor ink color cartridge. Or you may have separate individual cartridges. A yellow cartridge, a blue cartridge, a red cartridge. And you insert these cartridges into the printer. 
And then, according to what is on your document, it'll precisely print those words on the paper with the specific colors and the specific orientation that is in the document. Now, just imagine this. Instead of having ink inside of these cartridges, these 40 printers will have nucleotides inside of the cartridges. Nucleotides. So, you know, DNA, you know, is made up of your cytosine, your uracil, um, your guanine, um, and cytosine. So, you, and adenine, um, you, you look at these nucleotide bases. These are what make up DNA. They're saying we can get a whole cartridge of cytosine. Load that whole cartridge up with cytosine. Put that in the 4D printer. Um, take a whole cartridge filled up with mole molecules of uracil. Load that into the 4D printer. And do that with the rest of the nucleotides, right? And from there, based off of digital molecular structuring that they may have in a computer program, they said, look, it's possible for us, once we sequence the genome, we sequence the gene makeup of any living organism, it's possible for us to go ahead and print out a version of the DNA of this organism, and then from there, grow it. Now, this is the, you, you probably, some of you get it, some of you may not, but the extent, the enormity, the severity, the magnitude of this is out of this world, and the implications can be disastrous. At the other extreme, it can be very good. And this is why I always say science and technology, it's a double-edged sword. Science and technology is Pandora's box. Depending on who's in control, who's safeguarding it. If you have a depraved mind, a sick mind, somebody has a very corrupt mind, a perverted mind, you, we're in trouble. But if you have somebody that has the best interests in mind for the people, for humanity, um, then it can be a good thing. Now, let me throw some scenarios at you. So, the 4D printer is only the enabler of the gene sequence that this digital program maps. Like, you know, when you look at when they show like the Ebola virus or they look at um, the polio virus, you know, they say, you know, we have it sequenced, meaning they know the order of the different genes of the virus. They have it sequenced digitally. So imagine this. That means I can basically say if if somebody has access to the database to a database they can have the gene of a a very um viral virus um something you know a very strong pathogen um a contagion and download it on a memory stick or something they can being in this digital now digital email the file across the globe to another country to somebody that's there and if it's a nefarious plan a, you know they have they plan on conducting some type of warfare uh germ warfare bio warfare think about think about this now they can go ahead and let me email this to you over there you just print out the gene sequence you just have your 4d printer download the virus Print it out and just let it get into society. This is what we're dealing with here. This stuff is 
dangerous. And that's just a virus. I mean, it could, it could be whatever you want. Bacteria. We've seen uh, Ebola. We've seen uh, this Zika virus. Uh, smallpox. Polio. Um, anything that you can imagine. Like I said, it doesn't just have to be a virus. It could be bacteria. It could be fungus. Parasite. Any living thing. All they need is the gene sequence, the digital, the digital gene sequence, and they can just email it back and forth. And then the power realizing who has hold of a 4D printer. So this is just something for for us to think about. Uh, We're in some very um, unpredictable times right now. Um. And this type of stuff needs safeguard. I think we're in an era where um, science and technology has outpaced the efforts to even evaluate and safeguard and set up uh, regulations of the practice and the development of a lot of the science and technology. Um, so we have to get ahead of that curve. But um, that's it. Um, didn't want to overwhelm you. Just wanted to share that with you. Um, so we're just talking about the potential of 4D printers and how they can be misused. Um, and once again, that's that article is in the Journal of Foreign Affairs and it's entitled A Brave New World. All right, Dr. Smoy Swagger signing out. Hit me on Twitter at DocSwag06, D-O-C-S-W-A-G-G-06, and I'm out. You'll have some more um, audio blogs coming to you shortly. Peace.